good morning another day another live session and as we wait for people to join in usually about 35 40 people join in, in the mornings evenings much more join in but then by evenings it is very difficult to maintain a routine of live sessions but whatever at least you can watch it uh, as i save the video for future um, viewing on the channel so good morning to all those who have joined so I just wanted to uh, talk about today about finasteride and how uh, taking breaks off finasteride is essential. Now sometimes uh, in life you have to step back to leap forward and so is the case with finasteride, a strategic pause while taking it routinely might be the key to sustained success and might be the way you can take this drug for a long period of time like many of my patients who have been taking it for the last 18 years, 20 years also and been able to preserve their hair on their head. Hair gone can never be replenished and therefore the timely intervention using finasteride is a must. But everybody cannot sustain this drug for a long period of time and therefore uh, there are certain strategies which one must incorporate in your plan, in your protocol to be able to get the benefits of this drug for a long period of time. Hair today, gone tomorrow, very often aptly used term, it descri describes the plight of many individuals who are grappling with androgenic alopecia. In the quest for a full head of hair, a full mane, finasteride has emerged as the front runner, the beacon of hope, offering a scientifically validated approach for your hair restoration. Some questions are coming up straight away now itself. Please hold on, I'll answer them later. So finasteride, as we all know, is a, is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. It curtails the conversion of testosterone to DHT. And this is the DHT which affects the follicles which are prone to DHT. The receptors are prone to DHT. Uh, the, the DHT receptors on the follicles are very sensitive in those who carry the male pattern baldness gene. And therefore, this is the chief culprit in hair follicle miniaturization. Clinical studies have affirmed that uh, it has a role in halting hair loss progression and promoting regrowth in a significant subset of patients. While finasteride is a powerful ally in combating hair loss, it is essential to remember that even too much honey at one point of time will, will taste bitter. Therefore, periodic breaks of finasteride might just be the breath of fresh air your follicles are craving for. So too much of a good thing is bad. And so is the case with finasteride. So therefore, uh, I have proposed my protocols, uh, the protocol of holidays from this drug, Pro finasteride holidays. So implementing a structured two-week hiatus, going off the drug for two weeks from oral finasteride after achieving your desired therapeutic outcomes, whether following six months of continuous use for hair loss, or six months after the hair transplant has been done, if you're taking it for hair transplant, for preservation of your results, can be scientifically justified based on the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic considerations of finasteride. So let's address these concerns one by one. One is the mitigation of drug accumulation um, and associated adverse effects. If you do not take a break, if you do not allow the drug to be washed off from your body, the drug is going to accumulate and cause side effects in the long term. The pharmacokinetic profile of the drug is such that it possesses a plasma half-life of 5 to 6 hours. Though the plasma half-life is only 5 to 6 hours, what patients do not understand is that its biological effects persist for a long time. Because the 5-alpha reductase inhibition that it causes is rather sustained. It is much longer than the plasma half-life of finasteride. 
So therefore, it leads to prolonged suppression of dihydrotestosterone levels in the body. And tissue accumulation of drug continues with chronic administration. And this may result in uh, the drug being piling up, the drug piling up in the tissues and therefore exacerbating side effects such as sexual dysfunction, such as mood disturbances and other systemic effects. So all the patients who take uh, finasteride in the long term, I have observed over my 20 years of experience treating hair loss and doing hair transplants. I have seen that the patients who were initially taking drugs unmonitored in the long term were the ones who were, who were reporting side effects. People who follow a judicious, careful, scientific-oriented protocol in consultation with the doctor, periodic reviews, have never had any side effects. And I have had such patients who have been in the very long term who have been taking finasteride and had salubrious results from its use and uh, minus the side effects. So it is very important to take a drug holiday, a temporary cessation, a break, which allows for the uh, clearance of the accumulated drug in the body. And therefore, this potentially reduces the incidence and severity of adverse side effects without significantly compromising the therapeutic efficacy of finasteride. Another thing to note is that the prevention of pharmacodynamic tolerance via um, receptor modulation. See, as I always keep telling you, the body is not foolish. It is not that you can use various means to suppress certain hormonal functions of the body and it will agree and willingly uh, get suppressed. It's not so. The body will respond. It will hit back and it hit back, hits back in various manners. The androgen, the, to understand this, the androgen receptor dynamics have to be understood. Continuous suppression of DHT may lead to con, uh, compensatory upregulation of androgen receptors, the hair follicles. And therefore, they stop uh, responding to the effects of DHT inhibition by uh, finasteride. And this diminishes the effectiveness of the drug over time, which is a bad thing because you patients will keep coming and saying that, sir, I'm taking this drug for a long time. I have not emitted a single dosage C and uh, uh, my hair is not uh, stopping. Hair fall is not stopping. It is relentless. Now, what do I do? I took this medication on your uh, advice and I'm also having side effects. I still didn't stop, but my hair loss isn't stopping. And I'm sad to say that I have to go off this medication. Well, this in these patients, they have to be counseled properly and you have to tell them about the necessity, about the importance of going off drugs for a limited period of time and then continuing it all over again. So this intermittent dosing strategy introduces a planned drug holiday and it prevents a receptor desensitization. It prevents receptor, uh, prevents the upregulation of the uh, receptor and maintains the therapeutic responsive, responsiveness of hair follicles to DHT suppression and you continue to enjoy uh, uh, your result for a longer period of time. So what is the timing? The, what is the timing for which this drug you can go off? Well, generally in two weeks time, if you go off this drug for two, week, two weeks, I have seen that uh, no um, deterioration happens. And this is a safe period in which to discontinue the drug to avoid uh, your uh, going to back uh, going back to square one. But this should only be done after you achieve the outcome. If you are taking finasteride for hair loss, you will achieve this result between six to nine months. Only after you achieve this result, then you start taking the breaks, not before. If you have taken, uh, taken if you are taking the hair, uh, if you are taking finasteride for hair transplant, please stop taking this drug only after six months of uh, having got the hair transplant done. Uh, this ensures that the hair follicles have adequately been treated by this drug and they have responded to treatment. And then there is, it is very essential to monitor a regular assessment of your hair density and quality during and after the drug holiday can help determine the optimal frequency and duration of uh, subsequent treatment cycles. Also, uh, uh, taking breaks also helps you in determining when to go off the drug. If you're continuously taking the drug, when will you know that your baldness is already stabilized and you're not taking, uh, and you're taking the drug for no rhyme or reason? How do you come to know that? 
So when you take these uh, intervals of two weeks and you feel that you are okay and you and you want to try and reduce the dosage, say you are taking one milligram daily and you want to reduce the dosage to one milligram alternate days. So so increase this interval from two weeks to three weeks and see if in this three weeks after the first two weeks of break are over if there is hair fall which starts please do not uh, decrease the dosage but if in three weeks period you are not seeing any hair fall in the next cycle after three months take a break for four weeks and still if you do not see any hair fall that means that your baldness gene has gone to sleep that your baldness is stabilized and this is the time you can lower the dosage gradually to alternate days and then follow up again after every three months and see if your hair fall is stabilized and soon you will uh, yourself know you, you will yourself be uh, empowered enough to know when to discontinue the drug so patient selection uh, this approach will be particularly beneficial for patients uh, experiencing side effects or those at risk of developing tolerance however individual responses should guide therapy adjustments one has to strike the right chord and harmonize the treatment with the tolerance. One has to reach a dosage where the patient uh, enjoys the benefit of the drug at the same time does not experience side effects. So finasteride to end, uh, to conclude the session is, uh, remains the cornerstone in hair loss management due to androgenic alopecia. And incorporating structured treatment interruptions may optimize outcomes and minima minimize uh, side effects, adverse effects. In the symphony of hair restoration, finasteride plays a leading role, but sometimes a well-timed rest, a well-timed rest note ensures the melody continues harmoniously. So incorporating intermittent finasteride uh, dosing schedules may optimize the therapeutic outcomes by balancing efficacy with safety. Too much of a good thing can be bad. So these are the protocols that I have um, uh, formulated at Darling Buds Clinic with my experience of uh, about 20 years of managing hair loss and hair loss um, in men and women and doing hair transplants. So it is purely a clinical judgment, a clinical um, protocol that I have made and it has um, proven very advantageous, efficacious for my patients who swear by it and who have been because of this protocol of uh, drug holidays been able to take medication for a long time. So with that, I end this talk. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Your encouragement keeps the channel going. And if you haven't joined the membership, uh, you are most welcome to join the membership. It's just $1 per month. And uh, with this, I can engage with you better and at a more personal level uh, in the comment section. And we can also do um, uh, every month a video call if you are a Legacy Circle member. So thank you for watching and God bless you.